Our next 2019 Aurora humanitarian is a fearless human rights activist from Yemen who gathers information about a clandestine network of secret prisons under the control of foreign governments where thousands of men and boys are illegally detained. Lawyer and activist Huda Al-Sarari, she has scrupulously collected evidence of torture and abuse taking place in these secret prisons and has been able to draw the attention of the international community to human rights violations in Yemen. Ms. Al-Sarari graduated from Aden University in 2011 with a degree in Islamic law and holds a master's degree in women's uh, issues. Huda Al-Sarari is a member of Yemeni Women's Union which offers protection for rights and legal support including in prisons. She has devoted almost 10 years to the fight for human rights collaborating with the Adala Foundation for the promotion of human rights and freedoms and the National Committee for the Investigation of Human rights violations. Dear friends, we are about to show you a film about her. Once more, we caution you that the film will show a terrible evil against which the Aurora Humanitarians and the honored Huda al-Sarari conduct their work. The video, please. I've always been an active citizen. I was a lawyer. I defended the abused and imprisoned women. Those who couldn't find defense lawyers in courts. The Yemeni society is a closed and patriarchal one, where the vulnerable groups, women and children, suffer from many problems. That's why I have created and led a human rights foundation that monitors and registers such violations. War came to my country a few years ago. The Houthi movement has occupied a major part of the country. Radical Islamist groups also took advantage of the chaos by occupying a big part of the Yemeni territory. The government called upon the Arab coalition for help. At first, the coalition troops helped free Yemen from the Houthi. But soon, they came to be a threat to the population of the country as well. We were monitoring violations when night searches and arrests started. We talked to the relatives of the detainees, gathering information. That's how we learned about secret prisons where thousands of people were kept illegally on a mere suspicion of liaising with the insurgents. Those prisons are located in ill-fitted places like schools, security officers' houses, and even nightclubs. Little by little, a terrible reality was revealed. The inmates aren't visited by friends and family. They aren't fed properly. According to the sanitary regulations, there are no medical exams. The conditions are simply inhumane. Those camps are overcrowded, and skin and respiratory diseases are widespread. When we finally managed to get the first group of people out, even more terrifying things came to light. People are regularly tortured in those camps. On these pieces of plastic, one of the inmates has drawn the tortures he has endured. People are suspended in air and electrocuted, beaten and raped. People are afraid to talk. The country is at war, and security measures are still controlled by the coalition troops, especially in the south. We managed to raise awareness of the situation among the international organizations and media. As a result, more than a hundred inmates were liberated. I created an association of mothers of the kidnapped and incarcerated. We were protesting and demanding to stop illegal arrests and the extrajudicial violence. I wasn't afraid to speak up and soon became the target of an organized defamation campaign in the social media. There are certain peculiarities of the position of women in Yemen. In such conditions, it's easy to bully a woman, to take vengeance on her, especially if she's a human rights activist, to demonize her, to besmirch her good name. I was called all kinds of names. 
Some wrote that I was a Western spy. Others, that I was a radical Islamist and a terrorist. Strangers called me with death threats. So simply because you bring such violations into the light, you end up being scrutinized and your life is in danger or your family members' lives. This spring, the scariest thing in my life has happened to me. During the unrest in the city, my son got severely wounded. The healthcare in Aden is terrible and I wanted to get him abroad but couldn't because of the blockade. My son died in ICU and I couldn't help him. And nobody helped me. Even the security officers didn't investigate. In fact, even today, I still don't know why my child was wounded and killed. Was it connected to my work? And is that all I deserve, indifference to my son's case? Of course, my boy's death has changed a lot. Now, I'm terrified for my children's safety because I didn't give up my fight for the human rights. My first and foremost goal is to live in a safe environment with no human rights violations. In an environment where all people are equal citizens and their human dignity is protected and their social justice. That's my dream I want to make come true. We invite Hoda al Sarari, this brave woman, to our Aurora stage. Gentlemen. لقد تم اختياري لجائزة الأرورا بينما كنت أمر بظروف صعبة للغاية في حياتي وذلك بسبب فقدان ولدي. I was named an Aurora humanitarian while I was going through the hardest time of my life after losing my son. لقد كان دائما متشجع لهذه الجائزة ولذلك شعرت أن اختياري كان تكريما له. He has always been excited about this, so I felt that me being named by Aurora was a recognition of him. This honor helped me get through that hard time. To be perfectly candid, I never imagined I will be recognized, especially with all other humanitarian work done around the world. And the lack of global interest in what is happening in Yemen. أنا ممنونة بشكر كبير للهيئة المنظمة لجائزة الأرورا ولكل الأشخاص الذين وقفوا بجانبي. I owe a huge amount of gratitude to the Aurora Prize Selection Committee and all the people who stood by my side. لا أستطيع أن أشكرهم بالقدر الكافي أو أوفيهم حقهم من الشكر. I cannot thank them enough. هذا التكريم ساعدني أن أقف على قدمي وأتحمل المسؤولية بتسليط الضوء بشكل أكبر على قضايا التعذيب والاعتقال التعسفي الذي يحصل في بلدي. This recognition allowed me to stand on my feet again and take responsibility to shed more light on torture and arbitrary detention happening in my country. أنا لا أعتقد أنني ولدت لدي قوة وإمكانيات خارقة. ولكن أمهات وأخوات المعتقلين الذين يتظاهرون يوميا وليلا ونهارا يمدون بالعزيمة هؤلاء النساء هنا الأبطال الحقيقيات الذي لا يعلم أحدا عنهم. I don't think I was born with a special strength or resilience, but I get it from the mothers and sisters who protest day and night for their beloved ones. Those women are the true heroes who no one knows about. كذلك المجتمع المدني اليمني مدين لأي إنجاز لهؤلاء الضحايا. Yemeni civil society will always owe their achievements to those victims. شكرا جزيلا. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very, very much, truly. Dear Hoda, you inspire us with your bravery and strength. 
you stood up against not only the state machine in Yemen, but also the conservatism of society. But I want to ask you something. Now that you've managed to draw attention to the global hidden problems in Yemen, risking your own life in the process and achieving what few believed was possible, when you've achieved something like that that nobody believed in, what drives you to continue with your work even in spite of the danger that threatens you and your loved ones every day? ولدها ولذلك اشعر بالالم الحقيقي الذي تمر به امهات المعتقلين والمستضعفين I'm a woman who lost her son because of this cause and I feel the pain and suffering of every woman who have lost their sons and and, and relatives uh, as a result of this uh, injustice ولذلك ساظل اناضل لقضيتي وكذلك لمناصره امهات المعتقلين الى ان يتعرفن على مصير اولادهن ان كانوا احياء ام اموات ولكي يتم الافراج عن بقيه المعتقلين في اليمن and i will always continue working on behalf of those detainees until uh, the day come that justice uh, is achieved either those detainees got released or uh, we know the fate of those uh, detainees so they can uh, find peace in their lives Thank you very much. And you know, for thousands of young people in various countries, and for me personally, you are a shining star and a true inspiration, a role model. So thank you so, so much. And uh, you are not only the image of a fearless fighter for the rights of people, but also a real woman who cannot leave those who are in trouble without preservation. So thank you so, so much. Let us extend our warmest congratulations to all of our humanitarians and let us also salute you, Mabruk, Allah Mark. Dear Mary and Vartan, we ask you to present the medal to Huda Al Sarari, 2019 Aurora Humanitarian. Let us once again offer a warm and sincere round of applause. We invite Ms. El Sarari and the distinguished members of the selection committee to go from the stage to the guests of the ceremony. Thank you so much. Three, three brilliant Aurora humanitarians, three people from three different places on the planet whose compassion and faith have changed lives of thousands of people.